Hello, welcome back. If you saw the first uh, video, thank you for giving that a thumbs up and um, or a thumbs down. Uh, <laughs> but if you can give this one a thumbs up as well, that'll be great, uh, greatly appreciated. Uh, today I wanted to talk a little bit about um, how to register your company, but touch that very briefly um, because it's pretty much self-explanatory. Uh, but if you want me to put a video on that, uh, how to go step by step on it, I can. But you register your company on sunbiz.org and that's for the state of Florida. And you can start any company there. Now, I suggest that you speak to a CPA, which will be doing your taxes and a lawyer and then see what type of structure is better for you an llc or an s corporation uh, if you have any questions about that i can also uh, comment on those things uh, for example in my case i went with an s corporation i had a meeting with a cpa and the lawyer and uh, like a, a conference call and that's what we decided on for various reasons uh, mainly tax purposes uh, tax reasons um, and in terms of liability, really, if you start a company, um, it's its own entity, uh, so you'll be protected there. Uh, just make sure you don't mix anything that's your personal uh, with your business. So if you have a credit card, a business credit card, you can't be buying personal stuff on that and vice versa, because then they see that there's a, um, some type of mix uh, between your personal and your, and your business. Um, but before you even get there and register, well, I'll, I'll place the, the link down below so you can click on it and make it easier for you. Uh, but before you even get there, if you decided to move forward with uh, starting your own medical practice, and particularly I'm talking about an urgent care because that's where my experience is, that's what I'm doing. Um, but it, there's a lot of uh, um, similarities if you want to start a, a, pri um, um, a primary uh, medicine practice or um, aesthetics or different things. Uh, you can take a lot of this information and apply it to those as well. Uh, but first and most important thing is that this starts with you. Uh, what type of person do you want to be? What type of lifestyle do you want to live? Now, there's a range of different uh, approaches to that. Uh, you can, one extreme is you're a billionaire, a millionaire, you're making so much money and it's, it's, you don't, you don't worry about your balance and your bank account, uh, or you do, but not, you're not really struggling. Right. And then there's also, uh, the other extreme where, uh, you have your nine to five, you're working and you're off on the weekend, or you might be off during a weekday. Uh, but the point is that if you're an entrepreneur, you're going to be working 24 seven. You don't rest whenever your company uh, or your baby needs anything, you take care of it. There's no, I'll wait for tomorrow. I'll wait for later. You take care of it. Uh, as, uh, as an employee for another company, uh, you typically have your nine to five or your days off. Uh, you have your PTO, uh, your sick time. Uh, you have all these other things that, um, you know, and you can be home for dinner every night and have dinner with your family. As an entrepreneur, uh, that might not happen all the time because you're, you're busy or you're caught up with something else. So make sure that, that you know um, who you want to be and what lifestyle do you want to live. And then also, if you do choose the entrepreneur uh, side, um, just know that you need to put in the work. For example, when I started Care on Wheels, urgent care. Uh, we are a mobile urgent care and servicing the South Florida region, Broward and Miami-Dade County. Uh, I'm doing house calls from 8 in the morning to 10 p.m. and I'm also uh, taking uh, telemedicine uh, calls 24-7. Uh, so that's if I'm waking up at 3 a.m. and I still have to be at someone's house at 8 in the morning. Uh, so and then on top of that I'm doing all the administrative side of things uh, so there's, you need to put in the work if you're actually um, going to get into this. Now, uh, in terms of how you want to scale, uh, you got to look at that as well. Do you want to be a small operation? Do you want to be a medium-sized operation? Do you want to get large? Are you looking for investors? Are you looking for angel investors, venture capitalists? Um, typically, if you don't know someone uh, per, at a personal level that would like to invest in you, uh, you need to get some market traction before um, 
before anyone's going to invest in you. So that means you need to get started. How do you get started? Uh, you bootstrap is what, what, what it's called. Uh, you pretty much save all your money and that's what you're going to be using. Or you can get a loan from the bank, which is um, at a high interest rate. Now, if you are a advanced uh, practitioner, like a PA or, an, or a nurse practitioner, uh, and you're doing a startup, usually the banks are not going to lend you the, um, the money unless there's a medical uh, doctor, an MD or DO that owns at least 51% of the company. Uh, and then they'll give you startup uh, funding. Now, if you choose to do that, if that's the route you want to take, great. Uh, in my case, I, uh, I bootstrapped. I, uh, I'm funding everything myself. And, um, you know, you have to worry about uh, the ratio of uh, how much revenue is coming in and then how much do you have in the bank and how, how much does it cost you to keep your doors open if you, if you see zero patients. Uh, so you have to keep that in mind of, um, am I going to run out of money before I actually get some traction in the market? So that's something you have to keep in mind. Make sure that uh, you're very strategic and you stretch that dollar as much as you can. Uh, so that's that's uh, that's where it starts. Make sure that you know what you want, and if you want to be an entrepreneur, know that it's going to be a 24/7 um, job uh, for many years. Uh, the ones that build huge companies have a lot of stamina. They outlast everybody else and out strategize everybody else. Um, but you learn as you go through the, through through the motions. Now, the other thing that's my opinion, you let me know if um, if you don't believe in this uh, or you think I'm wrong or you or you agree with it. It's that if uh, if you see, so I, I've worked for for companies and I started my own now, but I see that there's much better management in a company when the the people making the decision on the top are actually providers or uh, for example an md or a do or an advanced practitioner like a nurse practitioner or a pa or now known as um, a physician associates physician assistants um, those typically are the ones that are seeing the patient doing the procedures so they know what equipment what things they like to use uh, what works better what doesn't work so well uh, what's away what's being wasted uh, and what's being utilized uh, so when you go into these these uh, administrative positions where you, where you can make decisions for your own company, for example, uh, you know you know a little bit more of what's better, uh, and you can't just look at the dollar and say, well, this is less expensive, so I'm going to save some money here. What if you spend five, ten dollars more on the same equipment, but just with a, a small variation to it that makes uh, it makes it a lot um, like better user friendly and you can move quicker. Now you're picking up on that efficiency. Um, you gave, okay, you paid five, ten dollars more for it, but now you gained uh, 10 minutes. And if you do that procedure throughout the day, you gain an hour, you gain two hours. So you got to look at, at it like that as well. Uh, now, not to say that just uh, providers or, uh, or advanced practitioners are good at administrative. Uh, when it comes to clinics, but also um, there are some cases where there's a nurse or there's a medical assistant or there's a paramedic or an EMT uh, or an office manager somewhere that is very interested in procedures and uh, the operation side of things, how things flow throughout the office, uh, that they actually get involved and they help out and they're there with, with the provider and they're like, oh, pass me this, pass me, you know, uh, you're suturing, you're doing something and they're involved. And then if you have that knowledge, more power to you, um, you, you, you know, that, that those are things that you bring to the table uh, when you start your, your company. And you have to see what are your strengths, what do you bring to the table, and also see what are your weaknesses. Who do you need to recruit uh, to, to, uh, to get a good balance on the day-to-day -day operations and uh, keeping your books straight, uh, all your finances, uh, your marketing, so just make sure that that you're building a, a, a solid foundation and it can start with just you. Uh, you have to be doing a lot of work uh, or you can start with two people. Uh, just make sure that they're bringing something to the table. Don't bring someone in because they're your friend, they're your family member, 
um, bring them in because they bring something valuable uh, to the business. Now, also that leads us into if you want to pay them a salary or or if you can't in the beginning because you guys just want to make some revenue, uh, build a little bit of foundation uh, before you start paying uh, salaries. Keep in mind that if you, um, it, it, a business owner does not need to get paid because they are an owner of that business. Uh, but if, 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 if you bring someone on board and you're not giving them equity, and you're not paying them because it, you know you guys agree on okay you know I'll um, uh, I don't need to collect anything let me just be a part of this um, when when it comes to when you do your taxes legally you can't have somebody working for free for you so either you give them equity and you don't have to pay them or uh, you pay them a salary and you don't give them equity so you keep that equity uh, so that's something to keep in mind as well. Uh, and if you want me to go deeper into any of uh, these things that, I, that I'm speaking about, uh, please comment down below and, and I'll, uh, I'll be sure to answer them. Alrighty. Well, uh, hopefully that was a, a dose of uh, information for you guys and um, give it a thumbs up if you liked it. Alrighty. See you next week.